Now, I don't get it. If Luke, uh, spoiler alert, I guess, is considered the last Jedi, then how could it possibly be called the Rise of Skywalker? Hmm. Now, I won't spoil anything, of course, of the Rise of Skywalker, obviously, but anything I do talk about in terms of the past eight movies and 40 years, it's all on you if you haven't caught up already. Like, who Luke's father is. If you know German, it doesn't count. Because Vader means father. Nobody likes Jar Jar. Nobody likes Jar Jar Binks. Kenobi was able to defeat the Chosen One because he was on a higher level. I have the high ground! You underestimate my jumping abilities! <laughs> that Han Han shot first. He shot first, damn it, McClunky. Or that the Japanese battle tactic of the Kamikaze is an acceptable tactic in space. Luke and Leia is totally finding love in all the wrong places. They're siblings, okay? Luke Skywalker is dead. Qui-Gon Jinn is dead. Darth Maul is dead. Jabba the Hutt is dead. Boba Fett is dead. The baddest motherfucker in the galaxy is dead. All the Je most of the Jedi's are dead from Order 66. Do it. The younglings are dead. Do it. All the children are dead. <laughs> Rose loves Finn in a very Russian. underdeveloped way. Rey takes a lightsaber and defeats a wounded Kylo Ren. He was shot by Chewbacca's crossbow blaster and took it like a champ. Like a champ. A champ! Oh, speaking of which, Rey's parents are... The Force will be with you. Always. Hey everybody and welcome to Lose Reviews and in this episode I'll be taking a look at Star Wars Episode 9 The Rise of Skywalker. After 40 plus years and like a dozen films and TV shows like The Mandalorian, J.J. Abrams is back and has a lot riding on his hands. There was a lot of criticism about his work on The Force Awakens for it being almost a copy and paste of a New Hope, almost, but not nearly enough divisiveness as The Last Jedi, directed by Ryan Johnson. I personally did like episode 8, but I can totally see in hindsight where the divisiveness is. There were some huge risks that were taken, some didn't work, some did, some I did understand. He was trying to do a lot of Empire Strikes Back level twists, but some didn't lead to anything. And that's why J.J. Abrams has a jack load of responsibility in his hands to cover. And I'm personally happy to say, in my humble opinion, that he covers most of them. Most of them. One of the major things I appreciated about episode 9 was that it delivered certain answers and awesomeness that I personally wanted and expected and anticipated. But let's cover the basics here. Cool spaceship battles? Check. Lightsaber battles? Check. Dynamic heroes that have great chemistry with each other? Check, check. Force powers? New force powers? Check. Answers to some unanswered questions to the past previous two films? A very good check. But wait, is that more unanswered questions I see? Damn it. Long story short, I really enjoyed The Rise of Skywalker. I did. It probably might be my favorite out of the three in terms of fan service. Can I get a hiya? Hiya? No, 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 not that kind of fan service. But its biggest issue though was that they were trying to cram, cram, so much in so little time into one movie while trying to rectify some of the things established in The Last Jedi. There's some old and new characters like Billy D as Lando, he returns and he was great. Surprisingly, Carrie Russell's character of Bliss, despite how short her time on screen was, she was very cool and she really worked and left a strong impact, mostly because she already has a relationship with one of the main characters. What didn't really work for me was a new Naomi Aki's character, Janna. She's a brand new character that was introduced and we're trying to feel something for her, but it's just not enough time to introduce someone new like that. She kind of has a similar backstory to Finn, but it doesn't really go anywhere. And despite Carrie Ann Fisher no longer being with us, they did a really, really good job, like a really, really good job with whatever footage they had left with her while she was still around. 
around. The heroes really do a good job of holding their own here. Poe, Finn, C-3PO, he really stood out. He stood out a lot in becoming a little more than just a comic relief droid. He actually becomes more vital to the plot. Chewie steps up too, BB-8, and the new Conehead android. And of course, Rey. They all do a great job, not just in this movie, but for the last six years and three films. And they pull all the stops out here. At the heart of the film though, it's Rey and Kylo Ren, whose yin and yang dynamic force lightsaber quarrel drives the action. It's very intense and very emotional, especially when the overall goal here is to wrap up the Skywalker saga. Like, total endgame here. Nine films, this is it. Epilogue finale, this is it. J.J. Abrams and his crew did manage to wrap up a lot of things here in a really big, shocking, emotional, spectacular fashion. At times, it could be argued a little derivative, maybe not as cut and paste as it was A Force Awakens with A New Hope, even if it did feel a little rushed in a short amount of time. But I can't help it, I really loved it, and I'm happy with what they did with it, even if it does still leave some more questions out there. And I do hate to jump in that wagon of comparing A New Hope to The Force Awakens, but The Rise of Skywalker does feel like The Return of the Jedi or The Revenge of the Sith. It just, it's the biggest and boldest of the three. They go out with a really big bang. And unfortunately, we're in a world where everything is so divisive, you can't make everybody happy, but I'm happy to say, that I really enjoyed this finale. And with that being said, I'm gonna give this four lightsabers out of five. Well, there you have it, you guys. I hope you liked this video. Be sure to look down, like, and subscribe, and you'll be good to go. And I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.